Nade has left the club. A man that we only played 21 times last season has gone for £15 million. And I have spent a lot of money this transfer window. I honestly have no idea how we got rid of him. Welcome back to the Queen's Park save, the start of the fourth season, where, of course, we have been taking Queen's Park as high as we can in the the cinch premiership. Forgot how to say it for a second. I was about to say kinch. But we, we started in the lower division. As you see, we're not there. Third place, second place, and uh, now we're rocking in fourth place. And we're selling players for £15 million. I have no idea how we managed it. But, of course, we weren't going to say no to that. He wasn't even starting last season. So we sold him. And brought in some players, and we're about to go over the transfers. We're about to simulate through the entire season, and we're about to ask you to smash the like button on today's video. Almost messed that up. Subscribe if you're new around here too. Can we please smash 15? Is that the same like target as last time? I think it is. We're going to go with it anyway. 15 likes on today's video. That would be very much appreciated. And let's go over the transfers. Starting from last season, um, we brought in a youngster. Who again, just like in previous years, has not been great. Uh, we didn't sign anyone, sell anyone else last season, so that that's all. That's all. There we go. So on to this season. Mo Lay, obviously, not actually last season. You know, like the end of last season kind of situation, because I, I would have talked about them in the last video. But you know what I'm on about. Mo Lay has left the club for thirty-eight thousand pounds. I think I did talk about this one because it's been decided for a long time. So wages off the bill. Have to sell him. He was terrible. soji has gone out on loan again. This time to Huddersfield as a a, a squad player. So. I mean, he's probably not going to get much better, if I'm being honest with you. Nade left for £15 million. Pounds. That is the big moneymaker there, but not the only moneymaker there. Michael Keane has left for 500 k which normally we actually scream and shout about because that is a very good fee for us normally. But in this season, clearly not. I don't know if I regret selling him. He probably still had a couple more good years in him in hindsight. I probably shouldn't have sold him, actually. I really actually shouldn't have. I regret it. I regret it. I'll hold my hands up here, boys and girls. 500k probably was not worth it, but we have sold them anyway. Next up, Clark Harris. This one, I should have sold, and I'd stand by this decision. 4.2 million pounds for a man that was decent the first, actually great the first season. 23 goals, 7 man in the matches, 7.1 rating. And last season, decent, 16 goals. But I think that Parrot has just recently started to... To get on his level, I would say, if we actually look at Troy Parrott, we can see that they're not too dissimilar in a lot of areas. Troy Parrott's also younger. I mean, there are mentals for days in Clark Harris's favour, but I back Parrott. He is our starting striker for this season. And I am very happy about it with Clark Harris gone for £4.2 million. And then the youngster went out on loan. Obviously, we have bought in players too. So let's go over them. Norton Cuffey. You might recognize him as an Arsenal player in the world of today. But he's not an Arsenal player anymore. He's a Queen's Park player. And he has a right back option who is three star current ability, four star potential ability. Meaning that he's a good cinch Premier League player at this current moment in time. Premiership player, sorry, I should say. Um, really good stats. I think he's a good rotation option and is only going to get better. Not a bad sign at all. Next one, Karamoko. He is a striker, left wing, right wing. Probably won't play him on the right wing because he can't play as a winger and he's right footed. So, well, he could play as a winger, but crossing eight is, no, he's not a winger. But anyway, comes in from Copenhagen, which obviously is a side that have a lot of experience in the Champions League, Europa League, those kind of competitions. But he's just a decent signing. Only 6.25 thousand pounds per week. Pretty cheap for us now. Can't complain about that at all. Carlin Grant comes in. Again, a little bit expensive, actually. 8.75 million pounds, but we're starting to pay people in the 10,000s area. I know, it's crazy stuff. But he's come in. Left wing, striker, right wing option with really good stats and still plenty of football left to play. 28 years of age. We had him at in the West Brom save last season, so we know what he's about. And we know that, of course, he is coming from West Brom on a free transfer. Very happy to welcome him to the club. Still has great physicals, great stats in the prime of his life. I think Carlin Grant is a great Scottish signing. Next up, another Scottish signing. No, he's Irish. I've just been very offensive, haven't I? Mikey Johnston has joined the club for a free transfer. Again, I just, I actually, no, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. Again, the rest of them have been great signings. This is the one where I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I needed to bring you in. And he's just, he's not improving right wing or left wing. He's, he's okay. Is he going to play much? No, but are we playing him? Paying him a pretty cheap amount, yes. So 4.6k, probably selling for a profit halfway through the season or next season. So, I mean, Mikey Johnston, welcome to the club. Tom Biscoff, 
could could not complain anymore. Is that Biscoff? Am I saying that right? Because I know there's like that Biscoff Biscoff um spread and uh, uh, uh biscuits Biscoff biscuit biscuit. No, that that <laughs> that's B I S C O F F. No, I've, I've definitely not said his name correctly. I apologise for that, Tom. Um, let's just call him Tom because it's going to uh, respectfully. I'm going to butcher that name. It is German, Tom. It's so much easier for me. It's easy for you guys to not have to complain in the comment section down below. Twenty-one years of age, five-star potential ability, three-star current ability, one point eight million pounds. No chance of it rising. Record fee for the club at this current moment in time. And he is a great signing. I think he has got potential to be the best player in this club by a long distance. Okay, I know we've got McKenna. He's going to be great too. But come on, five-star potential. You cannot complain about that. Still very young. We know exactly what he's all about. Great stats across the board. Definitely going to be a starter for us already. 13K is a lot, yes. But we're going to have to start getting those big bucks out if we're going to get some good players. We have missed out on so many players because we just quite not had the budget. You know, like, not even like, we're not had the budget. Just not like, we haven't had any players on their wavelength in terms of, of wage. So it felt weird to sign someone for £20,000 per week when everyone else was getting like eight. So, you know, like, it's, we're baby stepping in the right direction. I think Tom is a great signing to do exactly that. He's not the, the, the record signing anymore because we brought in this man, Bright Ari Mibby. We're definitely going to call him Bright as well, just because, again, Bright is a great name. And it's easier for me to say. £2.7 million could eventually rise to 3.3. So he is the record signing at this current moment in time. A centre-back option, that is going to be a starting player for us. £16,000 per week, though. It is a lot. I hold my hands up and say it is a lot. But if you compare him to Nade, who, can, can we remind you, sold this man for £15 million. We compare him to our man Bright. I mean, there's just a not there's just not a lot in it, is there? I mean, Nade's better at corners and crossing. It, yeah, he's he's four years younger as well. I've no idea, no idea how this footy manager game works. But I am stoked to have sold him for fifteen million pounds and bought him in for two point seven million pounds. Great signing, great business from me. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Soriano has also joined the club. Another great signing by me. I'm just tooting my own horn here, but I do think I've done very well this transfer window. And it's not over, by the way. I'm going to update you later. I won't show you the schedule, actually, because they'll have spoilers about what I'm about to talk about in terms of results. But, um, but, but uh, you know, I'll wrap up the transfer window because, boys and girls, we still have £9 million on the bank account. And trust me, I'm trying to spend that £9 million. Uh, Mario Sora uh, uh, Sori Soriano, sorry, Soriano, oh, said sorry in there, um, is a right wing, left wing off option, who I think finally solves our right wing issue. He is going to be a winger. I think he's going to play that position incredibly well. 15 pace, 15 agility, 15 acceleration, 15 finishing, 14 crossing, dribbling, 12 first touch, 15 passing. He is across the board a great player. He comes in with not a whole lot of first team experience apart from the second division of Spain. But I do think that he is just going to come and, and just, just do amazing things. I mean, if we compare him with um, Zazena, who was our starting right winger last season, I feel like it's pretty much night and day in terms of who's better. Yes, I know you're thinking there, oh, he's better in those things. That's free kick hitting long shots. Uh, that is penalty taking. That is technique, which he's one better in. That is corners that he's three better in. And that is dribbling that he's one better in. Mentals are his. Physicals, I don't care about jumping reach and strength for my wingers. I just don't. Well, I do kind of care a little bit about strength. Two strengths is a bit... He's, he's very weak, is what we're saying. But he's pacier. I think he's brilliant. I think he's a great signing. 17k per week. Yep, a lot of money again. He's a good player. I think he is already going to be a leading cinch premiership player. I think he's going to be exactly that for us. So, we have to welcome those boys to the squad. But... They have all played some games at this point. Actually, apart from Soriano. Soriano has not played a game yet. But the rest of them, I think, have played games. And we have gone through to the UEFA Champions League qualifying stage third. which are Third third stage playoff. I don't know what you actually call it. But if, if we beat SK Rapid, we're going through to the... To the Champions League, which I did not think would be physically possible for us, if I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you boys and girls. I thought we were going to the Europa League for sure, 
And we, we very casually beat um, this team. I know them. I just can't say their name. I do apologise. 7-1 on aggregate. Then we drew one all to PSG, PSV. If I'm, not, if I'm honest with you, I thought this was the game to go into the Champions League. Um, and then halfway through it, after the first leg, um, they said, you know, draw for the for the leg afterwards. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. So this it's not the game to go into the Champions Cool, cool, cool. So we got a one all draw. And I thought, oh, we've done all right. Like, you know, we beat them on XG. It was away from home. I'm going to smash them off off camera. It's not even the game to go into the Champions League. And, it, oh, my gosh, it started terribly. Two goals to them very quickly. Our XG was horrific. It was like a 0.4. I changed it to a cam formation. Put put someone up. Who did I put on? Um, I want to say... I want to say Sensi came on. And I moved... Zaz- no, I brought on a winger. Oh, I don't know. I did something. And... Parrot, Zazana, Sensi. Through to the next round. And then, now that we're in that round, we've absolutely shanked it against SK Rapid, a team, by the way, that I think we should be annihilating way worse than uh, PSV, in my opinion. Um, we lost 1-0 after an XG of 0.182 uh, uh, and the XG of 0.89. I said that wrong, but you can read. You know what I'm trying to say. And now we just have to beat them at home by more than one goal and we're through to the Champions League. And that's the game that we're exactly about to talk about right now. In terms of the league... Lost our first game, um, won the rest. Uh, we're out of the Via Play Cup, which is obviously the, the cup that we won last season. But I don't care because Champions League is calling our name and we're playing a game right now to do exactly that. Go to the Champions League. So we're going to do exactly that. This is the team that we're going with for it. And yes, I will hold up my hands and say we played a game against... It would play a game against. Uh, we played a game against Hibernain. Hib- 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 I really need to learn the names of these teams. Um, and I did not rotate, which in hindsight was a, a, a horrific decision, a, a very bad decision, um, which has left some of our crucial players like um, like Yates, like Meat Shoot, who is now becoming an absolutely crucial player in this team. Three goals in the Champions League, one goal in the Cinch Premiership, and Sensi again still. Still decent. Going down in the star ratings, though. I don't know. It's making me concerned. Going down in his train. It's, it's making me worried. It's 31. He's not getting any better. Michu is starting in his position. So normally I'd have Michu, uh, Sensi, Biscoff, and not Biscoff, sorry, Tom. It's just not how you say his name, Rexa. Um, and Yates in there. Uh, so Yates would be down here. Michu would be up there. I don't feel like I explained that very well, so I need to actually show you. Um, but, but, People are tired. Bruce is tired. Bruce, by the way, we signed on a new contract. I told you about how I signed him for a £12 million release course. No one was interested. Immediately re-signed him for £32 million release course. Chuffed about it. Very stoked. Oh, and McKenna's very unhappy because um, Bayern tried to sign him, like, twice. And um, we said no. And uh, he, he said, can I go to Bayern? And I said no. And he said, but it's Bayern. And I said, well, um, no. And then the, then, the, then the team leaders came to me and said... Um, he should go to Bayern. And I said no, um, because I like him. He's 19. He's got five-star potential, and he's already a leading cinch premiership player, a good cinch premiership. It's still very good, very good player. And and he asked for a transfer, and I said no. Um, so he's not chuffed about the situation right now, but he's still starting every single game. But this is a team that we're going with for it. It's, it's going to go well. Bruce is tired. Um, uh, Bright is tired. Fox is tired. Uh Yates is tied, Meechu's tied. So apart from that, it's our best eleven. Parrot, McKinstry, Zarzana would like to have um Soriano in there, but he couldn't be registered um because he was signed after we played the first league. Sensi um Tom, Bannon, Ozzy Tutu, who still starting right back, looks like a very good player, is gonna be a very good player this season again. Ferguson, Scales, neither of them starting centre backs, but they are for this game. Norton cut uh, a Cuffy, who again not really left back but he's playing that for this game and McKenna and that's the boys that are going to get us into the Champions League and that's where we're going to be in just a second don't forget that I am simulating this entire season in this video so if you're confused as to why this video is like uh oh that's not the button I wanted to press at all that's very upsetting if you're wondering why this video is like 40 minutes long it's because I've just talked for 14 minutes um, and uh, I still have to play a football match and then, you know, simulate to the end of this transfer window because I plan on making more signings. And then the end of the January transfer window because I make, might make signings in that and then the end of the season to actually tell you what happened for Queen's Park in this season. But 
Champions League. That's what we're focusing on right now. I really do think. Now, I, my rule is generally, do I recognize any players in their team? And if the answer is no, then I think I can beat them. I don't recognize a single name there. We should be annihilating them. That is, that's just simple maths. That's arithmetic, boys and girls. Simple arithmetic. Zero players known means zero players exist, which means we're going to win. And the one shot currently is not exactly making me feel good about that. So we're going to go to a positive mentality, which we do all the time, by the way. If things aren't going well, we go to a positive mentality. But we always have that high possession, 71% since he... Oh my goodness, that would have been brilliant if he scored there. Um, but we always have that high possession. So I feel like it's just a matter of time before the chances keep coming. We get, get in behind, snuff the ball into the back of the net. No one's ever said that before, but I've started it today. Uh, it's just seeming not to come in this first half, which is unfortunate. And I think I might go to the cam formation. We've been terrible so far. Let's um let's go to that cam formation. Cam being central attacking midfielder, if you're confused. Um, Tom can Tom can play there. Can yeah 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 no yeah he can play there. He'll he'll play there. Since he can't play there. Um no he can't at all. He's not a box to box. Oh no, he's good. he could play there. He'll play there. He'll do. The, he'll do the job. Stamina? What's his stamina like? Oh, it's fine. Hey, <laughs> stamina is overrated for a box to box midfielder. Probably the most important stat for them. But anyway, um, let's hope that this is the Champions League. Why am I taking this so casually? I'm honestly, um, no, no serious face. It's on. Even though you can't see my face, it's on. Norton Cuffy on the ball. We're gonna make tactical changes if we need to sometime very soon. Here's Norton. Inverted wing back, not not what his role is, but he's playing like it because you know he's right footed. Uh, I'm trying not to say Biscoff. I'm really sorry. I, I keep I keep wanting to say it. Tom, call him Tom. <laughs> Forty minutes ago, and we, that highlight was just a nothing highlight. Nothing happened there, but we need to see some more highlights. We need to see something happening for these boys. We're berating them, and it's caused a highlight. Tom whips the ball in. Since he picks it up as his box to box, that's that's going box to box for me. Look, he was in their box he's not in it he's just about in it again but i should actually be focusing on bannon who's on the ball into ozzy tutu tutu trying to find a player but is working his way back to ferguson at least that defensive is uh is working well not seeing many opportunities for them in terms of the stats so you know can't complain about the players that i didn't really want to be starting at all since he's in and he scores that is why that man has not been dropped even though he's totally been dropped from the first team but I don't know, should he? Am I just being a bit ageist there? I don't know if I am. Yates is too good. Uh, Tom is a great signing who's only going to get better. And Michu is also a great signing who's only going to get better. He's just There's just not enough midfielders, unfortunately. But I will thank you very much for getting us 1-0 up in this game and back on level terms in terms of the aggregate. And surely that's going to mean that they're going to want to come out of their shell a wee bit. But we can make a tactical change to try and counteract that. Um, Johnson hasn't actually come on. He, he has not played a single game. For our, no, he has. He has. He has. I don't know. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, he can he can play. Um, don't know if he's the most skillful player, but he's the one that suits that right wing role the most. I just had a big cough come across me and I paused the recording to do it. Um, Ozzy Tutu also looking tired. Bruce probably has enough stamina to see out the rest of this game, so he's coming on. Since he has done all he needed to do, and now Yates can come on and finish the job, I feel like that's all the subs I'm going to make for this moment in time. We're going to keep on this attacking mental, uh, this well, the, not attacking, but you know, this more positive approach to play with the central attacking midfielder because obviously we weren't scoring before it and we scored with it. So you know, again, simple arithmetic, boys and girls. It's a better formation for us to use in this game. And here is Tom putting it into the top corner. His first goal for Queens Park. I almost forgot the name of my team. Probably because I was focusing on calling him Tom instead of Biscoff. But he's put it into the top corner. No assist for anyone there. I don't know why I'm c concerned about that. That's not a worry at all. They've headed it out. Actually, J Johnston has gotten the assist. There's an assist for Johnston. And now I'm actually much happier that I brought Johnston on. Because he's gotten an assist that could currently be sending us to the Champions League. We're going to get annihilated in the Champions League, boys and girls. I really don't think we're quite at that level yet. But it's, it's just good to be. I'm happy to be here. I'm just happy to be there. And don't concede now to ruin that party. They hit it away. They do collect it immediately, though. They're trying to go for exactly what Tom did. They're not as good as Tom, though. No one's as good as Tom. 
Uh, Parrot is looking tired, so we're gonna bring him on. Uh, him off, sorry. And Ferguson, although is playing well, is a wee bit tired too. We're going to bring Fox on for his experience to shore up that defense and get us across the line. This is a man that's been at this club for a long time and deserves to go into the Champions League for us. And I think currently it's not looking like we're going there. I don't think there's any way he's offside. I know I only caught just the end of it, but he looked well onside to me. And he was, and it's now 2 all on the aggregate. And we can actually see how that goal happened. How did it happen? Left wing, puts a ball into the mixer. And, uh, yeah, no one's, no one's covering him. So it probably should be Scales coming off, really. I think that was kind of more his man. But Ferguson's come off instead. I mean, it was, he was more tired. But here's a chance now, actually. It's Johnston putting it in. McKinstry, wide of the target on the volley. Mate, that would have been a beautiful goal to go into the back of the net. Unfortunately for us, it hasn't quite found it. And we're into additional time. I think we're going, yeah, we're going to extra time, boys and girls. Two on the aggregate, at least we're the home side. I'm not happy with the performance again. I'm I'm just not. We should not be having an issue against this team. It's two one. I mean we're winning the game, that's the important thing. But we should we should have seen it out. We should have kept the clean sheet. Maybe it's got something to do with McKenna not wanting to be at this football club. I don't know. Uh, oh, Karamoko, mate. That would have been outrageous if you got that one in. It's a good save by their goalkeeper, to be fair. But um Tom, I almost called him Biscoff again. Can get it into the mixer. Nothing happening from that one. You, you never expect a, a corner to actually be a highlight after you've seen a very obvious highlight beforehand, you know. But this one is a corner that is going to be a highlight. It is headed out immediately, but it continues on. Johnston has the ball. Tom's on it. Tom whips it in. McKinstry can't get onto it, but Bruce picks it up again. McKinstry turns and he puts it onto the wall. What is worth it? Tom's there. I thought, honestly, I'm, I'm going to level with you. I thought he was wearing green. Is anyone else in that ballpark that they thought that he was wearing green? What happened there? Bruce? McKinstry? No, he's not, wearing, he's not wearing green, Rexo. You've gone mental. But he's put it in. And Tom is already showing that we, he was worth every single dime that we spent on him by scoring these goals here. He is single-handedly putting us through to the Champions League. And we're going to have to make our last substitute. It can't be him to come off. It, it just can't be. McIntyre is going to have to come off. Grant is going to come on. Experience in the championship. Now you're about to have experience in the champion, Champions League, mate. Come on. See us through. 3-2 on aggregate. They're not getting any highlights. They're not getting any shots. They're not getting any possession. If anything, we're going to score another one. They don't have a chance of scoring another one. Here is Grant losing the ball. Not exactly that experience that I was asking for. And, and they're through. And, and oh, they've hit the woodwork. Oh, bounce. Yeah, no, move, move back down. Move back. Quiet it down, you know. Just 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 ease it into the end of the game. Thank you very much. Um, Balance mentality. Cool down. You know, Johnson as an inverted winger. I don't know why. He, he would suit winger more. It would make sense for me to change it to um to, to winger. But I'm, I'm not going to. And um, we're going to hope that we see ourselves go through to the Champions League. They have a corner. Again, I don't think this is a real highlight because, you know, we made a tactical change. We talk about it all the time, but it just needs to be fixed, footy manager. Thank you very much. Don't, don't, no, no. I, I don't want this to go down to penalties because we, we have won, I think, every single penalty shootout we've ever had at this club. And I feel like that streak just can't continue. And if they score here... I thought that was a penalty for a second. I honestly thought that was a penalty for a second. And, and, and you have to show us the final whistle, don't you? That's just cruel, isn't it, footy manager? Grant, he's offside. This cannot be. No, he's not offside. He's just collected it. This cannot be. Do not. This this can't be a real highlight. It cannot. It cannot. It might be. It's frightening because it actually might be. And they're on the ball. And they're running down the right-hand side. And they're whipping a ball into the mixer. And they have a header. But Scales heads it out. And we're through to the Champions League, boys and girls. I... I am shocked, I am privileged, I am happy, and I am surprised that the, that we have actually made it, and I'm just waiting for confirmation. Um, Champions League playoff, yet yeah, we win it, so does that mean we're in the Champions League? Is there any more, any more qualification stuff? Turn me like forward one day? Confirmation that we're in the Champions League? I don't, I don't really... I, 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 as I said, I thought the PSV game was it. Surely 
we're in now. Can't be, can't be more. Playoff. Schedule. Um, the draw's coming up. The draw. No, that's playoff draw. Third qualifying round, first leg. No, we, what, what's the date? Oh, we're over here. We're over here. We're over here. Um, second leg. Squad registration. League phase. We're in the Champions League, boys and girls. I went a bit crazy on deadline day, hence the, you know, 615k and 2.65 pounds per week left. Um, yeah, we signed a, a lot of players. So, I mean, starting with the sales, we didn't do any. So, <laughs> making it all the worse. Um, in terms of signings, I told you about Soriano. Um, well, he's got a Spanish mate, uh, Mala who comes in for just £1.8 million. Pounds. Again, no chance of it rising. I feel like that's a pretty good signing. He's got good potential. He's left-footed, inverted winger on that right-hand side, winger on that left-hand side. Two really ideal positions for people for the future. So another Spanish winger. We're now with Zazang, Zazana, Mella, and, of course, Soriano. Next up, we brought in this man for 900 k and I regret it. Thought he was going to have five star potential. He only has four. I mean, I, I still feel like I might be able to sell him for a profit if I loan him out a couple of times. But yeah, not my best piece of business. Next up, we brought in Cabal for three point five million pounds, and I, I mean, I'm okay with it. But again, I kind of thought he was going to be a bit better. But he has been playing in the City R this season, doing quite well. Um, and he's got decent stats. Left footed centre back again. At 25 years of age, could improve a bit, Six foot one, It's okay. I think I'll be able to sell him for a profit eventually, but not my best signing of all time. I feel like I was kind of panicking at the end of this transfer window, and uh, I think this shows it. Um, Nade is back. Uh, I will admit, I signed him almost entirely just to be able to say I sold a player for £15 million and I got him back for nothing. Um because it just feels good to be able to say that, doesn't it? He went onto the transfer list for £14 million for some reason. So he offered a loan, and he's in on loan for 7 k per week until the end of the season. So uh, welcome back, Nade. Next up, we brought in another loan player, and that is Dennis. I don't know how to say that name, but he's a German midfielder with really good overall stats, good mentals, and he's getting paid 9 k per week. A bit steep for someone that... In hindsight, I don't think I really need it. I think Nade and Dennis, I did not need to sign. I don't know why I signed them. I did not need to sign them, but I did. And uh, they're, they're not even terminatable loans because they've got options to buy at the end of the, the loan. If we check here, yeah, it cannot be terminated. So do 9k per week until the end of the season. I mean, he's going to be good. I'm, I'm covered. I've got, I've got depth, and that's the most important thing. But I think the best signing... And this one is not a panic, uh, is Hedgy. Hedgy coming in for just £14,000 per week. On a loan, again, like, he's not ours, but his stats are outrageously good. 13 dribbling, 13 finishing, 15 first touch, 17 free kick taking, 15 long shots, 15 passing, 16 technique, 15 vision, 11 agility. I don't know why I'm mentioning that. But, you know, really good stats across the board. Played for Southampton up in the Premier League. Um, played for Alvarez in the La Liga. And, of course, for Celtic in the Cinch Premiership for many seasons in the past. He is a great player. I think that he's going to... He needs to start, but I don't know where he's going to start. Because I, I kind of want to play him as a winger. But he's not actually pacey enough to be a winger, in my opinion. So if I played him as an inverted winger here, which I think would work really well. He's got nine pace. I just don't feel like that's enough. And also, we don't own him, so we don't really want to be... If we can progress our players, we kind of want to progress them. So I just think he's going to be a super sub for the entirety of the season. I think this is what our best 11 looks like now. Fox has been dropped to the bench with Mibby and Cabal in there. Sorry, um, uh, Bright is what we're calling him. Um, Ozzy Tutu at right back. Bruce still at left back, of course. Um, McKenna did not end up getting sold, even though he's still very unhappy at the football club. And uh, wanted by Tottenham and by a Labour cousin. Um, Yates, Michu, uh, Tom, then Soriano, McKinstry, and Parrott with a stacked bench and a stack reserves. We now have zero youth players in our reserves because we just don't need them anymore. And I've all gone back to the under 23s, even Willocks, who I think has got great potential. I tried to loan him out, 
to get him more development, but he's just going to have to play for the youth team for a bit because we are stacked in terms of our bench. Players like Johnston, Zazena, Karamoko, Nade, Weir are all out of a squad and don't even have the chance to be on the bench at this current moment in time. That's how stacked our team is right now. And I mean, that is a positive thing, but it's definitely given me a bit of a headache as to who to choose. But I think I've got the right team, and we're going to play this game against Hearts off camera. Um, we're going to come back at the end of the January chance window. By then, we should have just finished our Champions League run, and we will see who we, who, well, who we beat, how we did, and if we got any points on the board. We, I think we've got two very good starting games, this Belgian side and Olympiacos. Then it's just all hard. Liverpool, uh, Barcelona, Lazio, Galatasaray. Galatasaray is maybe a slightly easier one. AC Milan and Real Sociedad. Again, maybe Real Sociedad slightly easier. But they're all good teams. It is the Champions League. I'd be thrilled if we managed to get into this um, top 24. I wouldn't put much money on it, though. Okay, so I've simulated slightly further than the end of the January transfer window because I think, I think you'll excuse this. We're second place and we're versing Celtic. I just felt like I needed to show you that, boys and girls. We have done very well in the league so far this year. We have got 57 points from 27 games. We're just two points behind Celtic and we're versing them in this game. Now, recently, we haven't been doing as well. We lost to Rangers 5-0 at home. That wasn't ideal. But actually, no, 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 no. I'm going to toot my own horn here. We did okay apart from that. I just realized, actually, we do, I haven't updated you at all at anything um so 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 we played all these games champions league forgot about that forgot about that forgot you didn't you know it didn't go great no it didn't go terrible though we were one point away from going to the playoffs but our results just weren't good enough so we came away with a win in our first game which was up against um, uh, the, the Belgian side. Then we drew to Olympiacos, lost to Liverpool 2-1. Not, not a terrible result there. 3-0 uh, to Barcelona, 1-0 to Lazio, 2-0 to Galatasaray. I was gutted about that one. I actually hoped we could do something half decent there. 2 all to AC Milan, and then 3-1 to Real Sociedad. So I think overall, I don't know if we can complain about how we've done, but it's still just not quite our level. But as you can see in the league, you know, we've only lost, what, three games, I want to say? Four games? That's not too bad. Rangers, uh, two losses against them, a loss to Aberdeen, and a loss to St. Mirren. Six draws, 17 wins. We're doing quite well this year. And transfers, I know you want to know about the transfers, have happened. So, in the January transfer window, first of all, I didn't actually mean to tell you about this, but I'm going to tell you about this. Two pre-contract expiry signings of central midfielders. You're probably thinking, Raxo, why are you signing so many central midfielders? You're about to find out. But Patino, 23 years of age, and Paolo Bernardo, another young, well, kind of youngster. Decent potential, I hope. Three-star current ability. I'm hoping he's going to get better. Two really good signings, in my opinion, and not too high of wages, like 10k per piece. So that is pretty decent. We're going to start with the sales instead of starting with the, the signings as per usual. So in the January transfer window, we did end up loaning out this man, Mun. We did also manage to sell a youngster that we brought in a long time ago from Nice on a free um, for £140,000. Weir has left the club for £80,000. Not happy about that, but he wanted to leave and I uh, didn't really have the option to sell him for much more than that because his contract was expiring. Scales has left the club for £1 million. Stoked to be able to get that much money for that man. Was not playing this year, so happy to get that kind of money. Loaned out this youngster, loaned out this youngster, loaned out this youngster, and this is the one I am not happy about. Ryan Yates, he had a release clause. I did not know about the release clause. Two hours before the deadline day, I get a notification saying, release clause activated and signed. And the same message, not, not a simulation in between them. You know, it wasn't like, you know, oh, release clause has been activated. You know, here's your chance to send them a, a contract offer. No, it was, it was release clause activated, signed. Immediate. Couldn't do anything about it. Yes, that is on me for not realizing that he had a release clause in his contract. But, uh, yeah, gutted. Absolutely gutted that we let him go. He was a great player for us, worth so much more than £4 million to us. £10 million as he's worth right now. Like, oh, stupid, stupid stuff for me. I mean, at least we did get some money. But, 
really poor from me. Gusset about that. Mickey Johnston's also left the club for 300k. Happy to get him off the books. He was pretty average. Um, so yeah, that's why we're squirming to get central midfielders in. And um, unfortunately, with two hours to go, we couldn't get anyone over the line on a permanent deal. But we did manage to get a loan player in. But we'll update you on that in just a second. In terms of loan deals, Nade's gone. Um, yeah, we didn't play him. So he got recalled. And uh, this man's gone as well. Again, don't think I played him at all. So, you know, they're gone from the club. Hadji's still knocking around, though. We have played him enough to not upset uh, the people over at Southampton, so happy to have him as a rotation option still. We brought in this youngster, Sweeney, who I thought would have better potential, but he's gone out on loan, um, so can't complain about that. Only 15k as well. Ronnie Edwards has come in for 600k. I'm thrilled with that fee because I tried to sign him for £5 million during uh, the start of the year instead of, I think it was instead of our man, Mibby. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled I got Mibby instead, Mr. Bright. Um, but, yeah, Ronnie Edwards has come in now. Uh, they, they, the reason we didn't end up signing him for 5 mil is because he wanted, like, 50 grand. And then something just must have happened this year. He must have just played... Not, he has played next to no games. One game. 7.6 rating, though. Like, I mean, come on. You know, I'd be upset if I was him, too. Um, so we've just gotten him for a cut price. I'm thrilled with it. The last player that we brought in on loan is Andre Franco, who I know that I've had in an FC Porto save at some point in my FM career. Uh, I don't think that was a save I put on YouTube. That was just a save that I did personally. And, um, yeah, he's, he's okay. He's got decent stats. It was a bit of a panic. I just needed more cover. I did recall him being slightly better at defending, though. So he's not actually really a like-for-like -like replacement at all for Yates. So Bannon is taking the first-team spot again, which... I mean, I love Bannon. We know he's he's he's, he's a bit of, he's kind of my child. I don't know. That's that's the relationship I feel I have with Bannon, even though he's not a whole lot younger than me. I feel I feel like you know I love him. He's 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 beautiful. He's just you know I I think I had so much hope for him, just like Bruce and Bruce by the way still got a huge potential. And McKenna, I, I put him in the same conversation as them. Oh, McKenna's been out with an injury for ages. Cooper's been starting for ages. Should have totally gotten a better goalkeeper in during the transfer window. But, um, McKenna, but anyway, so uh, Bannon, you know, I wanted him to be just as good. He's not just as good. Um, I still love him. I still love him. Not chuffed that he's having to start, though. I mean, I would have loved to keep Yates around, as I've said. But at least we got some money in. But I am certainly going to try and spend that money before... We get the end of year budget. So we all know in Football Manager, if you don't spend your money, they're just going to give us this budget next year. So if we can spend this money before then, that would be ideal so that then we can get, you know, a top up in the actual end of season. But that's enough waffling. I've gone over everything I need to go over. I mean, we're still in cup competitions. I was still in the... No, we're not. We're, we're no, no, it's just the league. We're in no cup com competitions. It is the league. That is all we're focusing on. Knocked out of, and, and literally, just the other game. Uh, Scottish Cup knocked out on via Play Cup. We got knocked out very early on. Very early on. I think I even told you about that, actually. Yeah, not, not good. Not good. But anyway, I've been for a good result here against Celtic. We have been going with the positive mentality for this formation. Going to move it back down to a balanced because it is against Celtic, who we all know. Uh, potentially the best side in this league based upon how much they won the league by last season. Soriano has been a great signing, so he starts on the right-hand side. Just want to highlight him for a second there. McKinstry, been super average this year. Potentially looking to get a better left winger next season because he is just not it at the moment. Parrot up top has been okay. 11 goals from... 20 star it's not terrible it's not brilliant new striker would be nice um tom has been great four goals five assists 6.94 average rating i know that that sounds like i'm kind of overhyping him but he feels good he feels good um michu has been okay bannon yates was okay too michu actually not doing a whole lot but again just good potential good ability um, hoping that he continues to do more as the season progresses. Bruce Ozier Tutu has actually been overtaken by Norton Cuffey um, in terms of the starting role, so I'm not sure why Norton Cuffey isn't starting this one. Because if, if you actually compare the two of them, uh, Ozier Tutu, where is he? Down at O. Um, there's not a lot in it. And Norton Cuffey is younger, he's got more potential. It's just 
kind of a no-brainer at this current moment in time. Uh, Cabell and and Bright have been locking down those two starting centre-back roles for the whole season. Fox hasn't gotten in with a sniff. But I feel like Edwards could have a chance to push for that starting spot. I don't think that two-and-a-half-star current ability is a fair reflection. I think he could be just as good as Cabell. But I'm not quite sure if that's 100% true just yet. But we're going to play this game against um, Celtic now. I've talked for way longer than I anticipated. But that's always how it works, isn't it? You guys like hearing me chat. If you're still watching at this point in the video, you're probably half enjoying me chatting. And you're dealing with it. You're living with it. So we're moving on. Let's get into this game. Let's hope that we can beat Celtic. And we're going to have a look at this side. Because I imagine it's going to be changed from the real life Celtic side. They're always coming in for players that we are ha having an eye on. And they're always paying so much more in wages. Look at that team, man. Br Br Bricalo, we all know about him. A great youth um, youngster and football manager. Vlasic. Um, Thomas, I know they just brought in. We had our eye on him and he managed to get signed by them. So I aren't you in the centre back position. Very stacked squad. But it's us attacking the early doors and shooting it just over the bar. D, D, D Gre Gregorio. There's no chance of getting to that one, but luckily for him, it is over the bar. But we do see another highlight coming our way, as it is in the right position for us. And it is Tom playing it into Parrot, who passes it all the way back, but it almost works. Me too, again going for a shot, but mate, I mean, I, I don't know if that was a best opportunity, a best, sorry, decision for you there, Parrot, to, to cut it back when you were kind of right in front of the goal. Better to just swivel and. Take a chance at a shot, but there is Sianchu and Bracalo, the two boys that we were talking about, scoring a goal from a header, and we do really need McKenna back. Cooper is not quite at the same standard. Just talking about his star rate, his potential, his uh, current ability in terms of stats, like you just know McKenna is head and shoulders above him. He has been out for, I want to say, two months. Could continue to be out for a couple more weeks. But I'm sure he's right at the end of it. I think it's one of those injuries where you kind of go just play it by ear. And I think it had a huge like area that it could have been. Like it could have been anywhere from four weeks to three months, I think it said. Which is obviously a huge range. Um, but hasn't come back within those two months just yet. So fingers crossed. It is very soon. Here is Thomas, that left back that we tried to sign. Well, we didn't try to sign, but we had our eye on, to be fair. Um, but they obviously ended up signing them, and Bracalo gets another assist. A Belgian man, a Salamakas. I'm not actually sure how to say that name, but I'm doing my best shot there. Comes away with a goal. It's now 2-0 after a, a decent start on paper in terms of what we saw in terms of chances. Not really converting into goals for us, so we're going to have to go into a positive mentality to try and get this game back into our court. Currently, it is definitely being played on Celtic's terms. We've been ter terrible so far, sorted out, and I should probably be bringing Soriano off, to be fair. He has definitely picked up a knock. I should have done it during halftime to save a, a stoppage, but I am going to bring him off. And Miller, who has come in because Soriano has actually been injured in the past and done a really good job, one goal, seven assists, is going to come in as the inverted winger on that left, on that right hand side. Sorry, oh Zazana, mate, he's he's just completely out of the squad. He he can feel very hard done by. Got a bid for him for about two point five million pounds. Really regret trying to negotiate it up to four million pounds because they cancelled the deal and I couldn't get it back. Um, yeah, probably should have sold him for two point five at the time, but hey, it is what it is. You live and you learn. Could have made a a good January chance window signing with that money, but didn't end up happening i feel like we're really at a point now where we're struggling to find players within our price range that are of the quality that is it actually going to improve our team oh me too he's over the bar damn um thought he had a real chance to score there but like we've signed players on such cut deals on such bargains that i just I just don't know if there's like people within our price range anymore that are better than our players. We've also bought a lot of young players on free transfers that have gotten better. You look at the players like um, like even Tom, Michu, um, Bruce, obviously McKenna. I know I didn't sign them, but Parrot, another great, another great um, example. Bright as well, Norton Cuffey. All of these players, not quite as good as they are considered now as in comparison to when we signed them. So we can't really sign those big boys that are, oh, this has got to be a goal. Parrot does pounce on it. It's a terrible defensive mistake by them. But yeah, we can't really sign the players that are the step up because they're worth 20 million pounds and we just don't have that kind of money. But we also can't really sign the players that are worth only like 5 million pounds because they're not as good as the players that we currently have anyway. So 
I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place at the moment. We're trying to work it out slowly but surely. We're trying to get ourselves back into this game surely but sh slowly but surely. As that goal goes in and certainly is going to give us a boost. Um, Tom is going to have to come off. Haggy's going to come on. Oh, Haggy, sorry. Haggy. Oh my gosh, that poor racks up. Sensi also wants to leave the club. Free transfer will not re-sign his contract, unfortunately. So he will be leaving us in the summer. I feel like that one's a bit of an emotional one for me because he was the signing that I felt really changed the tide for us, like made me feel like we were turning into something different. Um, but just... Well, actually, no, it was incredible. It was incredible for a couple of seasons. But he's just getting older. And, you know, better players coming, younger players coming. It's just how football works. But, you know, gutted to be seeing him going at the end of the season as we continue piling on the pressure going with the central attacking midfielder formation now with Hedgie coming in. And, of course, a bit of defensive shoring up from Edwards there. Can we see highlights coming our way? Can we see something? I'm going to encourage the boys. I don't think berating or demanding more is going to do a whole lot considering the fact that we are not expected to be winning this game at all. We're going to completely change up the front three by bringing Parrot, Grant, well, Parrot off, uh, Grant on on that left-hand side, and Karamoko on up top to try and give us as much of a chance to get an attacking highlight as we can. Go attacking as well. Let's see one more opportunity, boys. A draw is a great performance. A loss is not what we need, but a loss is what we have gotten. And this race for the title is certainly going to come down to those games in the winner's category. The, um, the, the You know, when it splits, like that, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called the Champions League, I think. No, that's, not, that's another thing, Rex. So that is not the Champions League. I mean, I, I am kind of feeling like we were a bit unlucky today. They're, they're a good side. We played well. Um, but we do need to not drop points in the future because right now that five point gap is not what we needed so I'm going to move on off camera we're going to simulate all the way to the end of the season and we're going to tell you how it has gone surely Champions League places are coming again for us maybe even a title push but right now with five points of a gap it's going to be challenging well I didn't think we'd be in this situation at the end of the season one game to go and uh we're one point away from Celtic who we're versing away from home in the final game of the season. So if we win this game, we win the league. Now, do I think we're going to win this game? Absolutely not. I'm just putting it out there for feelers. You know, I'm just putting it out there to be completely honest with you. I don't think we're going to win this game. But on the last day of the season, away from home against Celtic, we have been known to win. I'm not saying it's going to happen again. But things are possible. So without any further ado... We're just going to have to jump into this game. We're actually slightly more due. Since last time we saw each other, I will go over the results. Um, I think the last game we played was this Celtic one. Haven't lost a single game apart from our game against Rangers here in the Champions um, the Champions Group. There we go. So I knew I was on the right track. It's not Champions Greek League. Champions Group. Um, drew to St. Mirren as well. Nil all. That was a bit annoying, but it wasn't terrible of a, of a result. You know, It c could have been better, could have been worse. Um, this Rangers one was disappointing, though. But Celtic and the Glasgow Derby to win the league, it is on. And this is the team that we're having to go with for it. It is basically our strongest 11. Parrot is out with an injury, though, so that does mean he's not starting. So Grant comes in as our striker. McKinstry, Soriano, um, Tom, Michu, Bannon, Norton, Cuffey, Cabal, uh, Bright, Bruce, and McKenna is our squad, and we are going to hopefully be able to win the league. I'm not saying that we're going to do it, but you got to hope. you got to dream. These are the moments that Football Manager is made to experience. The upsets, the wins, the league titles on the last day of the season at your rival's home turf. Can we do it against Celtic? It's time to find out. Last time we versed them on camera was not longer. You watched it not 10 minutes ago. In real life, it was a couple of days ago. And it, it didn't quite go the way we want it to, but early doors in this game, it's looking okay for us. But this highlight looks like it might be going their way, as they're certainly within their are attacking third, and Vlasic straight away heads it into the back of the net. I think that is the first shot that we've faced all game, and that is the threat of Celtic. We can have five shots, an XG of about 0 0.5, but they can still just get one chance, one bit of space, and nod the ball into the back of the net. There we go, first shot to our five. And it's, it's 1 0 to them, and they're winning the league as things stand. At least Champions League is secured, by the way. I should have actually been positive and mentioned that. But come on. 
We want ourselves to get back into it. We're not giving them many shots either. We're just getting more shots, but we need to see highlights coming our way. Let's encourage the boys and hope we actually see a highlight coming our way in this first half. Just to at least give me a little bit of hope that this might happen. And with five minutes to go in this first half, it looks like it could be happening as it is bright on the ball. Playing it over into Bruce, who is continuing to develop, to, de- to develop into one of the best left-backs in the world. And he is continuing to look great this season. Probably going to win the young player of the season, in my opinion. Um, and based on like the monthly awards, I think he's got a real good shot at it. But we do give it away, and it's definitely going to be their chance now. Vlasic again shooting the ball, but this time over the bar. I did think we were going to build up the play, get an opportunity there. Didn't quite end up happening. But we're back on the ball now. Is this highlight going to be ours? No, Tom gives it away. But we get it straight back. McKinstry into Grant. Looking to find some space, but he loses it to Soyanchu. And they have to build out from defence. But we get it back. And Soriano, I think, was going to score that for a second. Has it come off the woodwork? I don't know. But it's definitely gone near the goal. It must have come off the woodwork. Not quite in the back of the net, though, after a defensive mistake. What am I going to say? I mean, we have been unlucky. We've, it, it's kind of what I don't like saying that but it is kind of true we have just been unlucky but you kind of have to make your own luck in football sometimes and here we are Michu throwing goal and he shoots it wide of the target oh no it's a save to be fair it's a save to be fair but still one on one you would expect well not expect but you'd hope that he'd be able to finish that dinner he didn't get the opportunity well he did get the opportunity to do it but he didn't quite do it for us on that occasion this highlight looks like it might be continuing and a counter attack opportunity for for the Celtic side might be coming. We do win it back though. Bruce. Bright has it. Bright moves it into Bruce again. Who is good at running down this wing. Linking up with McKinstry. But he loses it there. But he wins it back. But he gives it away straight away. And it is Vlasic on the ball. Into Johnston. Johnston whips the ball in. They get a header. They don't get a header actually. But we clear it out. Bricalo. Into McGregor. Bricalo. He's shooting. Oh it's wide of the target. Thank goodness. That looked very very menacing for a second there. And that is an action packed start to the second half and substitutes are already on my mind I don't know if I can afford to change the formation I think we're just going to have to hope that we get something with this formation um no if we go to like the last 10 minutes I probably will but not right now like we can very easily be batted 5-0 by the Celtic side so you don't want to give them the opportunity to do exactly that but here they are scoring again and now I am completely rethinking that entire statement and I'm going to go to an attacking formation because Actually, we're two goals down now. There's no way we're getting... Well, we are. We could potentially get back in it with this formation, but you know what I mean. It's it's not helping our chances at all by playing a, a, a defensive formation. Let's get Hadji on. Play him in the cam roll. Let's get McKinstry off too because he's looking tired. Mella can come on. Soriano onto the le- left-hand side and Mella onto the right-hand side. And that's all we're going to do for now. But that goal is certainly... It's it's kind of put a nail in a coffin, hasn't it? And they have a corner now. If they score from this, it's all over. I think it's all over, boys and girls. Oh, that is disappointing. Looked promising for a wee while there. We're gonna we're gonna have to continue going. We're gonna. It's not over until it's over. This is still a game for the title. I think it just really does show like how how big a gap it is in Scottish football between Celtic and Rangers. And the rest of the teams. We are consistently coming second though. Oh my gosh, another goal. That's just ridiculous. Corners too. Um, Like we are consistently coming second. Of course we came second last season. We came, came second this season. But we just, we can't beat them. We, we need to rely on them losing in stupid performances against worse teams than them. Um, It's just not happening enough. And we keep dropping points left, right and centre every now and then. So it's just... Yeah, the, the gap is huge, and we we just need to keep working away, chipping away. We'll take a couple seasons, but hopefully, eventually, we can dethrone them, compete in the Champions League, and actually look like a very good football side. We have good players, it's just as a long project. I need to remember, we were in the, the championship, the, the cinch championship a while ago, and there's Bruce scoring a goal, giving us a little bit of hope. Um, Just like, what? We've had, this is our third season in the the premiership so we weren't long ago in the championship and now we're definitely considered the best of the rest in terms of scottish sides so you've got to give a hats off to that but when it is days like this where you need to win to win the title you hope that maybe you could do just a little bit better and there the ball's bouncing around not even really a highlight there from you football manager sorry to 
Sorry to say that, boys, but there was never a chance that was going in. If we score, concede another corner, okay, we, we are very lucky that we hasn't, haven't conceded that one again. The XG as well is 1.06, and McKenna has been outrageous this season. He is actually considered to be a hot favourite to win the, the player of the season. I don't think he will. But 29 appearances, 20 goals conceded, 15 clean sheets. In comparison to Cooper, who played, I think, 9 games and conceded 14 goals, that's outrageous, mate. He has been, like, Cooper's been fine, but McKenna is actually the catalyst for us not conceding goals. He is insanely good this year. I am actually going to make a defensive change because we aren't really doing that well in the defense at this current moment in time. And uh, McKenna, although I'm talking about how good he's been this season, 5.9 rating. Not his day for sure. Not our day for sure. We're going to have to watch our Glasgow rival, rivals lifting the title as Celtic, I think, have officially confirmed winning the league here. It is in the past. In the past, we have stopped them from winning the league. That game we won 1-0 away from home meant that Rangers won the league. But this time, we can't stop them, and they win the league against us. Oh, gutting, but it is what it is. There's more things to come in the future for Queen's Park. It's just the beginning. And uh, with another opportunity for them going over the bar, getting the corner, we just need to hope that we don't concede another goal from a corner and accept Champions League once again. That is great. That is great. We can't complain about that. And I do think that the qualification is easier this time. I think it, it's changed from three qualifying rounds to just two because our reputation has gone up as a league. But we can see here, uh, yeah, not quite enough on the day. And Celtic fans will be chuffed. But... um. Queen's Park fans are going to have to wait at least another season. And this season has gone very well, as per usual. I mean, in comparison to last season, they're, they're, they're both incredible feats for us, really. To beat to beat Rangers to the, to the second place, to the Champions League spots, it's great. But 79 points this year, 80 points last year. Celtic have massively dropped off this year, to be fair, getting 83 instead of 93. Um, so we, we are continuing to, to build to do well, but we are getting a bit lucky actually. If you look at it, 79 points there, 80 points. Last season it was, the season before that, sorry, it was 89 points. Season before that, oh, I guess, we oh, I don't know. We're just going to keep hoping that we're improving. I'm, I'm being positive here and building this team. And next season, fingers crossed, something will happen for us to win the title. But Champions League is coming our way. And of course, another big season of signings and sales to improve this team will be coming as well. Have we been given any um, budget? I'd like to show you budget before I end the season. Is it coming or is it still not come yet? 3.06, I don't think, I don't, yeah, I think, I think that's been given to me. Oh yeah, they did set a budget, 3.6 mil. That's good for them, that's really good. Wow. We'll take that and run with it. I don't know if you guys really want to see um, uh, season reviews. I apologize. I never show you season reviews. And I never show you season awards either. Um, like in the past, I've won manager of the year. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm not showing you that. But I guess, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I'm mean, I, I continuing the trend and I'm not showing you anything. We're ending the episode here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Um, like this video if you are enjoying it. And I'll see you all later.